Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Underrail Expedition. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today as I take care of some mutants. I mean, I took care of some mutants last episode. I don't know if I'm going to take care of more of them in this one. Uh, it is possible. It is possible. I don't remember exactly because... Ooh, hacking 10. Uh, because, of course, I came here in the last episode of uh, that time where I murdered everybody. The episode that you didn't see. Um, yeah, I came over here. Oh. But I don't remember if I found... What is that? Acidic tongue, yeah. I don't remember if I found anything worthwhile. Uh, so I guess we're gonna remind ourselves... Well, I'm gonna remind myself. You are gonna find out. Yeah. Last episode, though, we killed a bunch of dogs and their owners, I assume, or friends anyway. And, um... It, it, nobody was happy about it, including me. I wasn't very happy about it because they ha injured me and I didn't like that. Uh, and there's also gas over there. If I remember correctly... Ooh. Oh, empty mutagen container. That's not very good. Ampules is very good, though, because uh, we need that for the reagent and whatnot. If I remember correctly... Okay, so we got something here for our energy cells right there for the Haxor. There are some dead ends in here that we don't need to go to. So I'm not 100% sure uh, what is going to happen. You know, like for example over there, that looks like a dead end. It isn't. I, I, I'm pretty sure that one isn't. We got a cryogenic collector. That is a very high quality one. I don't know what that is for. Oh, there's a... Yes. Uh, and we got skeletons over there, and, uh, toxic barrels, and, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bunch of damage, basically what's gonna happen here. So let's not do that right away, let's ex explore a little bit more before that happens. Because we got some lockers over here, one of them is locked, I bet it doesn't have anything interesting inside. Do I have... no, I don't have low-level lockpicks. Something that I was told in between episodes, though, and, uh, that I will be on the lookout for, what is that? Mm, firearm barrel. That doesn't matter. Um, something I was told in between episodes is that I could have taken the Eye of Chort, or the Patch of Chort. I don't remember the name exactly. Uh, because apparently that was my my, lo my locker. Or that was somebody else's locker. I, I don't know. Something happened, and I didn't do it. Uh, didn't do a very good job. And uh, so we're going to get a little bit of experience there. I'm not sure how many... How many... Yeah, this, this doesn't matter. Just being here. Is bad for everybody's health. Yeah, so... Oh! I was gonna say, you don't die from this! Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> you do a lot. You die, you die pretty fast. Um, which is fine. Let's actually slow the game down. Because we're gonna take a little bit of contamination there. Uh, but there are some areas down here that are quite a lot more contaminated. And of course, the longer we are in here, the... Uh, you see what I'm talking about, about the dead ends? Um, the longer we are in here... Speaking of which... The, uh, the more damage we take. So, another dead end. Oh, and that? Look at that secret. Yeah, I found that. And it has scrap in it. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh... Oh, we're gonna die again. It doesn't highlight anything. But it just has scrap. And, uh, ooh, wait a minute. Let me pay attention. Yeah, we don't need to come this way. No, we do, actually. We do indeed. There's a door that we didn't open. So, the game preserves the speed settings. Oh. Hi. Please don't punch me. Don't punch me. Too much. Uh, okay, we're bleeding, but... Oh, we're also contaminated. That's going to be a bit of a bummer. Uh, not innervated. Wait a minute. What the heck? Oh, right. So... Yeah, we're going to need to shift those around. We're not really going to bother with that for right now, but let's uh, let's find out what happens. Cause... Oh, there's a lot of acid going all over the place. I didn't mean to do, to do this. Uh, let's get another stun over here. Oh, I need to move for that one. Okay, can I move? Nope, cannot. Let's burn you. That's also going to be bad for me. I had my speakers on. You probably didn't didn't notice it, but uh, I did. So was making noise. Okay, so here we are, and let's get this 
There we go. And then we have a table. It is a table. And we have some shelves. With a mutated cockroach. You're not sure if mutations make it more or less disgusting than regular cockroaches. Um... If mutations, or if the mutations? Because every animal is mutated. Every single animal is mutated, because that's how, you know, it works. Uh, we don't need these. Yeah, let's get out of here. Uh, the table, I don't know what that is for. It might be interesting that we had a cockroach in there. Um, let's see. Do I, can I use these? I can. Okay. Um, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, every animal is mutated, because, you know, that's how evolution works. So I suppose, I mean, it is a mutated cockroach, but it is the mutations. The mutations. Which mutations? Well, it's undefined, but it, it, the game doesn't need to define it. Is this a dead end as well? There's a computer over here, but it doesn't work. Yeah, I'm gonna reload again. In fact, I'm gonna be forced to reload because I'm dead. <laughs> I didn't need to die there, but I did! So I didn't have to press the F something or other. I don't actually know what F it is. I press an F. I think it's F10, potentially? No, F9, potentially? I don't know what the key for quick loading is, because I rarely use it. It's only the, the quick save that I that I care for. Either way, um, we are victorious. And uh, can I carry my weapons around in here? I would say yes. I had, I had them out because of the protectorate, but... Or, not out. I had them unequipped because of the protectorate. Anyway, so, that's done. We can go back to the cantina. Uh, or... It's not... I'm not sure. The canteen? This place. And, uh... Back up... Oh, this is actually... We're going upstairs. That's important. That might mean... Yeah, that that is very important. Uh, because it means that uh, the other stairs up actually take us to a different level. Uh, or rather, of course they take us to a different level, but what I mean is they might um, take us to the same level that... Uh, I'll show you. I'll show what I mean. Anyway, we have a locker over here. That is that one over there. And there is an Eye of Chort. This medallion is generally worn by military personnel of, of the Institute of Chort. And we gain three experience from that, which is pretty awesome. And, that, and then we're halfway done uh, with our level up. Which is also pretty great. Let's see. I think we're at like 7, uh, 26, 27? 27. So we have three levels ahead of us. Which should be easily attainable. N not not really too concerned about that. Um, I am concerned though. About this. What is about to happen. So if we go that way. We actually go upstairs. And this is the this is the first level. This is level zero, right? But now we're at level minus one. Because we go down. Do you follow me? Does that make sense? Am I wrong in saying that? And then if we come over here... Of course, we could go the other way and have access to this way over here and have access to the uh, forbidden area uh, that I didn't actually explore. I think I was exploring in uh, in the that save that you saw briefly because I reloaded it. But now we go back to level zero rather than going to level one. You see what I mean? So I don't know if I'm correct on that or not. There's some vases and there's some rasa force and some bottles and an ekris of war for for. The faceless are nothing compared to the preservation forces. Proven! Exclamation mark at the end. And then we have some tortoises and an acolyte. And curator Nenna. And a library terminal over there. I think this is where where we were supposed to go. This is where we're going to learn all about the torts and uh, the, 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 the other ones. Welcome to Idine's library, sister. Today's quote, Chartists are like nucleotides from which DNA <clears throat> is composed. Small, or of which, you are composed of something, not from something. No, actually, you can be composed from something. That's just a weird, yeah, that just doesn't mean the same sort of composing. Um, which is usually the case, actually. Anyway, Chartists are like nucleotides from which DNA is composed. Small building blocks that together form something truly great, Idine. 
Absolutely. The original report, let's uh, read by uh, Tra Travers, Aiden Travers over here. I was the only one still alive from the expedition. As I found myself before this gigantic metal gate which stood clo that, that stood clo closed and seemingly impenetrable, I began to ponder the most recent events, sure that these moments were to be my last, for the whole expedition was doomed from the start. It has been many years since Hollow Earth was left to rust in the forbidding bowels of deep caverns. Biocorp had only begun to rec recuperate from the damage it suffered during the split when technocrats called me into their office. They explained to me that they wished to unearth, pardon the expression, par pardon the pun, most likely, because that doesn't, that's not an expression, it's probably a pun, uh, so pardon the pun, several abandoned but not forgotten projects from Hollow Earth, yes, it is a pun, and uh, salvage that which can be salvaged from the once impressive research complex. Biocorp desired this expedition in hopes of at least sh slowing down its decline, which started that. That started. No, actually, which also makes sense. Both of them work. Let's go with that. Um, that started years ago and wasn't about to stop. Also, it started years ago. It started years before because you're using it in the past. You can say ago for the past. Internal struggles only worsened the situation. Of course, due to the severity of the task, it could not be entrusted to just abo about anyone. Commas are missing. A senior scientist of my qualifications and experience was to lead the expedition, since only someone like that could be allowed to lay eyes on some of the most sensitive information Biocorp ever possessed. I accepted! I was truly excited to be going into deep caverns, and despite being familiar with how hostile the environment was, I cared very little for that fact. Commas again missing. Of the, um... Um... On the contrary, I viewed it as a new opportunity, a new high point in my career, and entrusted our survival into the hands of Captain Sagan's men without overthinking it. Few of my scientist colleagues were also to follow me on this mission, and once all parties were ready, we made our descent. That dash shouldn't be used like that. Uh, it's using dash like a coma, which is incorrect. Into death! Descent into death. Did you get it? Because it's... It, anyway, at least for both of us. Environment had... The, the environment, they forgot the the, the environment had changed significantly between Hollow Earth incident, the, again, the, the Hollow Earth, I misread it, between the Hollow Earth incident and the moment of our arrival, even more than we expected. Environmental hazards, natural predators in form of horrid and surprisingly alien creatures, as well as other unexplained phenomena were quick to decimate us. Bullets can stop beasts, but for how long? Hazard suits can save us from toxic fumes and corrosive liquids, but for how long? Reaching the main complex soon proved to be m mission impossible. 007, absolutely. Because this is an expression that I believe doesn't work in English unless you're referring... It, right? Because the movie, it, says it should be to be an impossible mission. So when you're, whenever you say mission impossible, which is actually a very... Wait a minute, is it very common in other languages to use? Yes, it is. Um, yes, it is, actually. Um, in Portuguese, for example, we use the word Missão Impossível, which is the translation. Uh, oh, actually, it's not the literal translation, um, because we don't put the colon in it. That's pretty important. We don't use the colon in the... Uh, in the um, in the uh, translation for the movie, or the movie franchise, anyway. Uh, I'm actually not sure. Is it because it's just double of seven? Is it... Which... which uh, is it the franchise, or is it just like one of the movies it's called? I never watched any, I don't think, uh, any 007 movies. Anyway, the point is, the, the literal translation of the Portuguese translation of the t title of the movie is Impossible Mission, which is not, obviously, what the original title is. For us to make it the, the, transla the translation, we would have to put the colon in there. Because the colon means, of course, that the mission is impossible. And it's kind of a funny title. It's a, I, I think it's a brilliant title, honestly. Uh, the, it's, it's a lovely title. I love it. Uh, mission colon impossible because in english you say impossible mission right but that's not as nice you could say mission impossible without the coma but that would be like death stranding or other titles that are weird or horizon zero dawn or something like that um because it's just all jumble of words uh, those are also fine titles I, I don't particularly have too much against those titles uh, for video games in those cases but anyway the point is this is a reference to 007 
and you shouldn't use it. Although this is actually the reason why this is here is um, not as a an impo uh, not as an inherent. Like I don't believe the writer wanted to reference Double Seven here, in the freaking shortest canon book. Um, but rather, it's just because it's a common expression. It's a common enough expression, at least I think it it, 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 it might be, because it is in Portuguese. Um, although people don't use it very often. But if you say that it's Mission Impossible without a coma, uh, because that's, you know, actually it would be Impossible Mission, but still, because we... The the order of, of uh, the adjective and noun is inversed in Romance languages. Uh, but if you say that it is Impossible Mission in Portuguese... Uh, then people know exactly what you're referring to. You sound a little bit like a goof, uh, because you're referring 007, but people know what you're referring to, and they understand it is correct for you to say that. Um, however, it is common enough that people might not just might just think of it as a... Uh, and also, it, 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 it's common enough, and it is the correct version of, of the language to say impossible mission, in Portuguese, obviously, um, that people don't don't say, oh, you're saying it wrong. What the heck are you referring to? Because if you say, oh, that's 007, the people also might understand a little bit of what you're referring. It's just maybe a little bit harder. But anyway, the point is, ah, big sigh. Anyway, the intermediate way to the east was blocked by an impenetrable cave-in. So we had to circumvent it by going to the north. After taking the first few steps towards our goal, we already found ourselves under siege by death itself, and it sated its hunger quickly, luckily before it got to me. I was the only one still alive from my expedition. We fled north and found refuge by one of the large gates. Rust, mold, and demise were in the oxygen devoid air deprived. Oh, this game does use the void. Uh, it's not the first time this happens. This game uses the word devoid uh, to, use, to mean deprived. Which is not the same thing. And actually, the void... Yeah, the void is specifically no oxygen. So, you know, it would be... It wouldn't be air, for one. Because we don't just don't say air. Um, rust and demise were... The, well, it can't... It can't, well, for one, it can't rust if it doesn't have oxygen, because that's literally what rust is. It's the oxidation of the freaking iron. Uh, but besides that point, um, I mean, the air might not have oxygen, but water and drip and other things might, might uh, drips, you know, moist, moist, moisture in the air and stuff like that might have oxygen, just not elemental oxygen. Uh, but the point is, I am trying to understand if this is not breathable in the sense that it, is it the void or is it deprived? Because deprived works for everything, the void just works for a specific scenario, and it's really weird to say as well. But anyway, continuing on. As well as, the, um, as some strange pulsating sensation that violently pressed on my skull. Poor captain, the only one still with me, wa the poor captain, wa was still lying in a corner and was slowly fading away with last bits of life with the last bits of life leaving his mangled body surrendering it to the cage should be a comb over there he performed his duty to his very last breath i was ready for the same fate but then the large gates opened light illuminated the area and strange and a strange pain from my head w no the it's even worse <laughs> come on where are the does and the comas come on Ah, some 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 passages in the game are better at this than others. Uh, like it's obvious that some of them were just not, they were not revised. Like this was written and the writer never paid attention again to this and just, yeah. So let's focus on more important things, which is, I mean, a symptom of of a small team and you know indie games and anyway. Um, and the strange pain from my head was instantly gone. While the lights weren't as bright as the ones in university, I it was much better than the dwindling glow of my last flare. I stepped through the gate and faced something I wasn't prepared for. I faced it. It was giant. It was alien. It was dash formless. Strange creature. A the the probably the strange creature was before. No. Str I'm just gonna read it. I don't know what it's supposed to mean. Strange creature was before me, and I had no clue of its origins or intentions, or really anything. All I could see is pure flesh with tentacles sprouting from it in all their glory. The sensation in my head, finally with a duh, had uh, my, returned, but this time it wasn't trying to kick the door down to my mind. Instead, it w gently knocked. I answered politely. Short was the only thing I could interpret during its peculiar exchange of thoughts. 
for everything else can simply be described as just some strange feeling in my head. During everything is a strange feeling in your head, my dude. This is this, this text in particular. During my three week stay, I was allowed by short to study it. Leftover equipment I was able to find in these old labs I combined with some of my own utilities and was able to set up a, that's the, not without a dash, that's without a dash rather, set up an improvised laboratory, in fact it would be set an improvised laboratory up, which was most excellent. Regarding nourishment, I still had my own personal supplies up to a point in time. Afterwards I had to rely on natural sources, which is poop. It's, it's, he had to rely on poop. This was, because that's the natural source. This was, I, what? This is what I had learned during my stay before I finally left short and returned back certain to, of, uh, that what I had found was an extraordinary discovery of unimaginable importance. <gasps> Chort can be defined as a large multicellular organism of unknown age, but judging from its genetic makeup, that's not with, that's also without a dash, but uh, it's all one word, it is primordial. And it should be a coma because also there should be a coma over there, but anyway. While it's it shares a lot of common cons, com, what? Common sequences with every living being ranging from the first single cell organisms up to modern, modern mammals, it is not directly related to us in any way. We do not have a clear common ancestor. How is that possible? Well, that I am about to explain. The creature can enter a state of unique type of regeneration cycles in which it loses any recognizable form and undergoes genetic self-repair. It puzzled me how and why it does so, but I had answers faster than I had thought I would. Chort has a remarkably similar cell and DNA structure to us. The number of chromosomes and genes is indeed different, but a lot of recognizable sequences can be found there. The part of its genome that was non-coding was larger than in humans, and by studying it, I have learned the answer to those two questions I asked myself previously. The number of chromosomes. Did you know that uh, humans have, uh, well, most humans anyway, uh, have uh, the same number of chromosomes? Yes, that is not a thing that uh, many animals have. Many animals have variable numbers of chromosomes, depending on which animal, uh, well, actually the pr correct term is depending on which specimen you're referring to. And when I say specimen, I mean, you, you can look at, like, imagine cats had different numbers of chromosomes. You could be looking at a cat and the other one, and just that one, one has 23 and the other one has 14 or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure if that's how disper, or is that the word, disper? That's, that doesn't sound like, like an adjective. Mm, disparate. Disparate is the adjective. Uh, I'm not sure if that's how disparate the numbers actually are between specimens, but yeah, that is, it's the, it's a, it's a thing. Um, anyway. Whenever the creature begins suffering from any form of mutations, chromosomal deterioration, or even cancer, it can enter the aforementioned state of regeneration. It doesn't regenerate its comas, though, so it makes it very hit difficult to even understand what it's trying to say, but it, anyway, it might do so in case when the environment changes drastically and new traits are necessary to survive. It was even able to pinpoint the gene... Re no, I. I was even able to pinpoint the gene responsible for this. Now, what happens when the creature begins regenerating is this. It's non-coding part of the genome that... Which... No, this is which. This probably is correct. Which can be... In Chort's case, oh my god, okay, forget the in Chort's case, uh, which can be considered something of a genetic backup, in Chort's case, uh, begins coding for proteins that, in turn, change and rebuild the whole chromosome, even up to telomeres which I uh, don't uh, know the meaning of. How it knows what sort of adaptation it needs to survive in the new environment is not yet clear, nor how it is able to recombine or even create these new sequences, but even this was a magnificent find and raised another question. Can this be applied to humans or other living creatures as well? Due to the similarity of the DNA structure, the answer might as well be yes, and with that, many other questions sprang to my, to, to my mind. Could we too use, no, could we use what we learn from short and adapt ourselves at will as well? Could we live infinitely? No. No, we can't. Uh, because of the heat death of the universe. Could we uh, be able to control our own evolution and strive toward a goal unimaginable before? Could we finally return to the surface world? I wanted answers. 
because obviously questions didn't weren't in, in uh, weren't missing. There were plenty of questions. For that, I was going to need time and support, as I had given Chort the final look before I left, hoping that it wasn't going to be really the last one. It became clear in my mind what I must do. My return to the to the university as a lone survivor turned out to be quite interesting and could because it's turned be this uh, or can i suppose best be described as an end to one thing and the beginning of another end of original report hmm well we also have important dates but we have the end of the episode as well, so uh, we're going to need to read the important dates in the next episode. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been a lot of comas missing. I'm really sorry for that, but that's just how it goes. As long as we have thus every once in a while, it helps a little bit. But for right now, thank you so much for joining me. Hope you had a good time. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.